morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the yet another uh, uh, session of the edition of the Capital Markets Conference uh, of Wiki. Thank you, Mr. Tiyaki, once again for joining us this morning. Uh, this, of course, is you know, the digital edition of the Capital, um, and uh, there is a lot of digital uh, platform experience that you can. Uh, have. It, it's not exactly as a physical conference, but we try to kind of replicate it. Uh, so there are experiences apart from, of course, watching the conference. You can also experience the networking lounge, and uh, you can download all the papers, the agenda, the uh, knowledge paper, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, so we try to create as much uh, interaction as possible. You can post your questions uh, in the chat box, and those will be taken. So as the session starts, you can start posting the questions so that it reaches us on time to be taken up with the speaker. So without further ado, uh, you know, I will invite our uh, president, Dr. Sangeeta Reddy, to make her welcome remarks. Over to you, ma'am. Good morning and namaste. It is indeed a scenario where necessity is becoming the mother of invention. And at the 17th annual Capital Markets Conference, I'm extremely happy to welcome all of you to this session, which has been coordinated with as near as possible to a, a physical meeting, but has many, many of the features. But most importantly, it has the important intent of convening the meeting on a very important topic. Let me first welcome Mr. Ajay Tyagi, the Chairman of Security and Exchange Board of India, we are truly honored to have you with us, sir. Mr. Rashid Shah, past president, Fiki, Ashish Chauhan, MD and CEO of the BSC, many other members from SEBI, and of course, Sunil Sangai and Vimanshu Kharji, the chair and co-chair of Fiki's Capital Markets Committee. Other members from Fiki, participants from all over the world, I believe even people from the US have logged in, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. It does indeed give me great pleasure to welcome you to this digital conference. We're excited to have been able to congregate today on this platform to focus on the growth of the capital market and to deliberate on building a robust market that can help achieve the vision of a self-reliant India, help India fulfill its capability and its aspiration to become a major economy or a $5 trillion economy over the next few years. And it cannot be overemphasized that the aspiration of a business can be fueled only through the availability of capital. I accord a special welcome to the Chairman of SEBI and take this opportunity to congratulate Mr. Tiyagi for an uninterrupted functioning of the capital markets. Even when the entire nation was under lockdown, there were no broker defaults or no other systemic issues a feature which clearly deserves due acknowledgement. It may also be um, uh, mentioned that the capital markets witnessed greater interest from stakeholders during the last few months, and the trading volumes have been high. Sometimes when many of us were worried about the economy, the scenario, the battle between lives and livelihoods, we found that the capital markets were one of the high points in the whole economy. All this has only been possible due to your effective leadership, sir. Thank you very much on behalf of the entire country. It would also be in order to thank Chairman, sir, for proactive and timely extension of timelines for various compliances by listed companies and market intermediaries during the lockdown. The various facilitated announcements made by SEPI helped companies focus attention on the safety of their workers and all efforts required to ensure the business continuity. During this period, FIKI has been extremely active. Multiple businesses do not block. Uh, we've made various representations seeking relaxation of various deadlines as businesses were coming into grip of unprecedented and disruptive situations. We've also had the privilege of interacting with chairmen and members of SEBI during the lockdown and request for further measures and I'm happy to report that many of Vicky's suggestions have been accepted. On behalf of Vicky, I'd like to also place on record uh, our appreciation of the consultative process adopted by SEBI before finalizing many important policies. 
We do understand that many initiatives are underway to improve the robustness of our capital markets. For easy access to capital, SEBI would set up a committee to consider overseas listing of Indian companies. Our recommendations were very well received by all stakeholders, and the announcement to take the agenda for was made by the Honorable Finance Minister herself as part of the relief measures. FICI is keen to see an early implementation of this forward-looking decision as it would also help cap Indian companies to tap capital for more deep and liquid world markets, especially when the need for capital is even greater in this COVID-impacted world. May I also draw emphasis that in order to draw attractive valuations in overseas markets, Indian companies should not be required to search list in domestic markets for the simple reason that foreign investors may be more receptive and more amenable to invest at higher value than some domestic investors. Mandating due listing in India and abroad would defeat or partially at least defeat some of the objectives of an overseas listing, which is better valuation depriving the country of very crucial and valuable foreign investment and foreign exchange. We do hope we have your agreement on this very critical point, sir. Let me once again welcome you all who have joined for this important conference. I believe that discussions today and tomorrow at the conference will bring forth many such suggestions on key policy reforms for the critical growth of the Indian capital market. We're all focused on how we can turn this current crisis into an opportunity in alignment of the government's vision of a self-reliant nation and FIKI's vision of a strong, inclusive, proactive, powerful India. With all the very best to all of you. Namaste and good morning. Thank you, ma'am, for introducing the theme and setting the tone. Uh, thanks again. And I must add that you know, every representation we sent to SEBI, we did have a response and even calls at time to explain uh, you know, if the issue was uh, not acceptable. So we're really thankful to you for that. And I hand over to uh, Mr. Rajesh Shah for his address. Mr. Shah has been associated with CAPM right from the inception and uh, been one of the guiding force and helping us put this together in the past as well. So over to you, uh, Mr. Shah. Thank you, Jyoti. Shri Ajay Tyagi Ji, Chairman, SEBI, uh, Sangeeta Reddy, President Fikki, Asha Wapan, Member CEO, Bhandashwap Exchange, Mike Alex Abdiki, the uh, Chairman of the Fikki Capital Markets Committee, Sumin Sangai, Himanshu Jyoti, the members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, it's really a great honor to be here for the 17th edition of Capital Markets. And uh, I take great pleasure in extending a warm welcome to all of you. I'm really privileged to have Sri Ajay Tyagi Ji with us because uh, how can there be a Capital Market Conference uh, you know, without the SEBI chairman gracing us? And the fact that he's taken time for this is uh, something we are very grateful for. It's great to see the 50 Capital Markets conference in its 17th edition. It's come a long way, and it has come a long way because of the support from all of you, but also the support from SEBI. Uh, for the last 17 years, our interactions with SEBI, uh, the kind of dialogue we have had, and the kind of response we have got, and especially in the last few years, under the chairman of, uh, under the chairmanship of Sri Ajay Tyagiji, the relationship between City Capital Markets Committee and SEBI has only got stronger. So thank you very much, sir, to you and your colleagues for this. And also, this is the first digital capital markets conference. And as with everything else, there are always pros and cons. But I think given the fact that this is a digital conference, there are a lot of opportunities for us to do a lot more things than what we could do in a physical conference. So I'm truly happy that we all gathered here. And we cannot start a conference these days without talking about the impact of COVID. COVID obviously is unprecedented. I think in our careers, this will be the defining experience that is there. It's, it's a healthcare crisis and it's an economic crisis. And our government, including our government, is uh, grappling this issue about how to manage the healthcare crisis and how to also manage the economic crisis. The more you try to control the healthcare crisis, 
has a cost on the economy and the more you try to free up the economy, the worse can get the healthcare crisis. So it's not an easy solution and all governments have tried to do their best. Our government has also been managing it well. And I must say that I think April and May were very difficult months, but from June onwards we've started seeing the green shoots and we hope and keep our fingers crossed that maybe the worst is behind us. And this conference in that sense is at a very appropriate point of time. COVID is also a great opportunity because I think a lot of, it's a pause. It's a pause for humanity, it's a pause for all of us. And it's a time to reflect and go back and correct, keep all the good that we have, but also correct one so that we get ready for the future. Because COVID will get over. We have to think of a world post-COVID. Maybe in three months, six months, one year, there is going to be a world post-COVID. There is going to be India growth story post-COVID. And we have to start getting ready for that. But while we talk of COVID, it is very important to acknowledge a uh, serious response in the last few months. I must say that there have been a lot of things in the economy that have been volatile. There is a lot of trouble that has been in the economy for the last few months. But one of the real high points has been our capital markets. Our capital markets have been functioning smoothly. Uh, SEBI has given dispensation and relaxation wherever required. But overall, in the last three, four months where we have, we have faced a lot of trouble, people have worked from home, our capital markets have continued to work well, the volumes have gone up, the retail participation has improved in the last few months. And I must compliment SEBI, the stock exchanges and the entire market infrastructure uh, companies who have managed to make sure everything has happened on time. Settlements have happened, clearing has happened. So that is itself something we should acknowledge and be very grateful for that we have a very robust capital markets with us. And the response of SIP always been very measured but very proactive has been a huge plus in the last few months. As we, as we talk about Atma Nirbhar Bharat, it, it cannot without the role of capital markets because capital is the, is the, is the, is the blood in the system of the economy and for that blood to flow we need a good banking system but we need a good capital markets also and over the years uh, I've been very fortunate uh, the last 30 years of my career have also coincided with 30 years of growth of Indian capital markets and having seen it 30 years ago where markets were opaque commission rates were high to what they are now where we used to be in T plus 45 days settlement cycle we are now efficiently doing T plus 2 with all the limitations of the banking system, the fact that our market systems have worked so well through through good days and bad days, uh, through events that have happened from floods in Bombay to terror attacks in Bombay, the markets have always been open and markets have worked well. So I think it's a, it's, it is a, an area where we are truly Atman Nirbhar and we have to use this Atman Nirbharta to make sure that we use capital markets for the growth of India. It's also a time to reflect on what are the areas we need to do more work on. And one of the areas we need to work on is the bond market. Because capital markets cannot be just equity markets. Capital markets have to be equity and bond markets. Credit is a very important part of the economy. And we can't have only the banking system providing credit. We have seen uh, the fraught with problems it can be if it is only a banking dependent economy. So we have to develop uh, the, the bond market. The current bond markets are still very wholesale and hence also prone to a lot of uh, you know high levels of volatility. The last two years have been truly very, very trying for the bond markets in India. But we have learned a lot and there are a lot of things that have got fixed, but there are a lot of things we need to fix even more and make sure that the bond markets also become very retail. We have been able to do that in the equity markets. The mutual funds and the stock exchange have played a great role in making our equity markets to be retail and in spite of the volatility I think people understand the risk reward. We need to do the same for the bond markets and for that the mutual fund, uh, all of us, market participants, uh, SEBI government, Reserve Bank of India, we all need to come together to now start working and take this opportunity to really build a very deep and robust capital ma bond market in our capital markets. The recent success of the Bharat bond uh, you know, tranche one and tranche two 
uh, between tranche one and tranche two now there is 25,000 crores of corpus and the market liquidity has also been very robust. It shows that there is a need for a retail product which is low cost, which is uh, which allows investors, uh, you know, a good risk return parity, but also gives liquidity. So I think bond ETFs have been, uh, we have made a start in that. It could be another great opportunity for increasing the retail participation. We also need to improve productivity, bring down the cost of the bond market in India for the retail uh, participants to truly benefit from that. I think the mutual funds have done a great job especially on the equity side, especially with SIPs and getting uh, retail investors into equity markets. We hope that going forward, we use the same mutual fund capability to build the bond markets also. So with that, I must say that we must, we have to work together. We all, all uh, the government, the regulators, the market participants have to work together. And the Prime Minister of India has said, let's make an Atman Nibar Bharat. In order to make that, Let's use other capital markets, what we have, to really make the country Atma neighbor. And for that, what is the most important is to convert our savings into investments. India is a country of savers. We have more than 900, almost 30% of our GDP is savings. It's actually one of the highest in the world. With this high level of savings, we still are dependent on foreign capital. We have to become more and more dependent on Indian capital. And we have seen in the last few years, that as FIIs have sold in the markets because they can be a little bit more impacted by global trends on flows and all, the local institutions, the DIIs, have been the backbone of India's equity markets. They have been there to buy when foreigners are selling and they've extended a huge amount of stability to be our markets in the last few years. It shows Atma Nibrata and we need to use that to make sure we, we convert ourselves from a country of savers to a country of investors, especially long-term investment. Because even banking can't provide long-term investments. It's only capital markets which can truly provide capital for the long-term needs of the economy, whether it's in the housing market, whether it's in the infrastructure investments to be made, whether new projects in steel and cement and other basic industries have to be done. It has to be the capital markets that plays a role in providing both equity and long-term debt to the players, but also providing liquidity to the investors. So what is a long-term instrument also has a short-term liquidity associated with that. We as market participants have to also work together. We have to think about what is right for the customers. We have to work by for using technology and trading to bring down intermediation cost. Intermediation cost in financial system is one of the big problems in India. We still have a very high intermediation cost economy and using technology and scale, we need to bring this down. So all market participants have to work for that. We have to become more customer centric. We have to move from a caveat on third to a client suitability culture where we are the custodians of determining what is the right product at the right price for the right client. Because clients need to be educated. We are not just chemists, we are doctors also in that sense for the financial health of our clients. So, so with that, I once again thank you all of you. And I know that um, this is a great conference spread over two days. There are, there are a lot of great speakers out here. And I am confident that the discussion during this conference will bring new ideas into the fold and we will execute them with the highest priority. So once again, thanking SEBI and especially Sri Ajay Tyagi Ji for gracing this occasion and, and being a big pillar of support to all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shah, for giving the detail of the setting the theme, etc. And you know, you, you rightly pointed out that capital markets is the backbone for an Atmanir Bharat, and we pointed out very some very significant points, uh, you know, on uh, making on, on the role of the DIIs, etc. In the capital markets, it's a significant one. Uh, may I now invite uh, Mr. Sunil Sanghai, who is the chairman of uh, Capital Markets Committee of FICI, the one who single-handedly with the FICI team actually has helped us uh, putting the event together. So thank you, uh, my thank you to you, Sunil, and over to you for your team address. Thank you, Jyoti. Honorable Chairman Sidi, my friend Asish Chauhan, my colleagues at uh, FICI, President FICI, Rasesh, Himanshu, uh, Jyoti and rest of the FICI team. 
and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to CAPM 2020. We are delighted to be back here again this year, though, as you just heard from the previous speakers, we live in a very challenging times and environment. Unfortunately, we can't be together the way we have been in the previous years, but we will try and give you the same feel or similar feel that virtual will be a richer experience for you. That's what we are trying to ensure, and Jyoti talked about some of them. Uh, this, this is not just a webinar. It's a, you should treat this as a digital conference. Uh, so it's much more than just a webinar. So please explore a number of features which we have actually put out uh, for you. This is the conference for you, uh, by you. So please participate, join the conversation, make your comments and suggestions. Uh, Every comment is very valuable. We will try and include, as Jyoti mentioned, uh, through the chat box. Uh, if not, we will take them back and work on them on any of your suggestions. <coughs> and any channel, there cannot be a better start of this conference than uh, with your presence. You have been, if I can use the terminology, rock solid support, as you just heard from the president as well as from Vasish, all through uh, your tenure and even before that. Uh, in fact, I remember you took the initiative of traveling to Bombay from Delhi as a part of Ministry of Finance before taking over as Chairman Sebi. And uh, I must say that you have honored us with your presence every single year as the Chairman Sebi in the last several years. So a big thank you to you, and uh, as Rase said, and I want to repeat this, that all through your tenure, uh, we have been very involved and interacting regularly with uh, SEBI and making suggestions, uh, and, you have, uh, uh, and your team has been very kind in engaging with us. Uh, before I put down the theme of the conference and, and put that in the context and talk about it, I do want to say one thing, which uh, repeat what Rasesh said, that under the leadership of the Chairman Sebi, our capital market has worked uninterruptedly all through these difficult 120 days. Just go back and see what was the situation on around 22nd of March. Uh, Chairman Reddy from the front, he came to office every single day in fact, sometime on the weekend also, because we interacted with him. And he showed the way, and therefore the market really worked uninterruptedly. Let's imagine if our markets were interrupted and we were unable to trade. That would have been a big, big hardship for all of us. That is the leadership. That's the resilience of leadership of our regulators and the leadership of the chairman. So again, a big thank you for that. <coughs> Sir, in this unfortunate pandemic, our Prime Minister has given a call as to make our country as Atmanirbhar Bharat, a self-resilient India. As Rasesh mentioned, and I believe for a self-resilient India, our capital market, which is extremely important for the growth of the economy, is equally important and it has to be self-reliant. We have come a long way but there are areas which we can still cover, and some work is required to be done. We need maybe some, I would say, fundamental changes, but the, the different thinking going forward to make our market uh, more self resilient. We need to increase the depth of the market, classes trust upon that, improve the efficiency, not just the trading efficiency, but uh, uh, otherwise also, and focus on innovation. Innovation improves the productivity. I have few suggestions which I wanted to outline to you. The first, uh, bringing variety into the market, the variety through the new product. I totally agree with Rasesh that the ma ma capital market does not mean just equity. It actually means equity and bond and other uh, instruments as well. The area where we, we can do more work on uh, is uh, convert and warrants. We have launched a couple of products in the last few years, REITs and units, 
which have been a big success and we have a full session on rates and limits later today. I know corporate bond market is very close to you, Chairman, uh, and we hope to hear from you today. Uh, look, convertible bonds and warrants are equally important instruments. As the market matures, these become much more popular. We have a number of restrictions right now in terms of the tenor, in terms of the pricing, in terms of who it can be issued to. Can we relook at them? They have become much more mature market. Uh, we can relook at and, uh, and, and maybe try and relax some of the regulations. The second area is accessibility. President talked about this in the open comments. Uh, can we make our market at par with the global market from the accessibility point of view? If there is a corporate who is wanting to raise resources in India and they are unable to do so because of the regulatory framework, it may not be appropriate. There are, there could be challenges like the motor, the motor ownership, locking period, the minimum public shareholding. All of this has been visited, revisited in the past. But can we relook at this? to give it at the same level which the global markets are prescribing. There could still be a corporate who may want to do an uh, offering outside India, but they, they, they get the same platform in India, they may consider India as well. Uh, and, and I think our corporates are maturing, they, are, they need this flexibility and they should really look at some of these. The third area uh, to touch upon is takeover and delisting. I know there has been a lot of discussion around this. Our takeover code has gone through a number of iterations. However, we still need to address a couple of areas in the takeover code. One with regard to thousand pins. I think we need to provide some kind of mechanism which internationally exists uh, to safeguard corporates uh, from unwarranted takeover. I totally understand that takeover and Restructuring, restructuring is very important for corporate and important for the monetary shareholder also. But keeping all these interests in possible, can we introduce some of these products? 100% acquisition. We have mandatory tender offer of 26%. This has been debated in the past when the code was being deleted. Uh, can we revisit this? There could be, this, this could provide a complete level playing field to all the shareholders. Minority squeeze out. There has been a uh, number of times the discussion around delisting, entry and exit, seamless entry and exit from the market. Uh, I think it is important for the maturity of the market we provide seamless entry and exit, and therefore minority squeeze out becomes an important area. I totally understand that there are other statutes which are involved in this, it's not just the city. Uh, but I think we all can come together and, and uh, formulate a regulatory framework which is which is good for, for the growth of the market. The next point, uh, I want to pick up the point which Rasesh mentioned is uh, India is a savers uh, uh, society and we need to give them the market for our market to really provide liquidity into the market rather than depending on somebody else. What are the numbers? We have almost two trillion dollar capital markets now. Only 15% of the contribution of the mutual fund comes from what we call it big 30 cities, beyond 30. 85% of the contribution comes from the top 30 cities. Uh, our aim of mutual fund is 10% of GDP, whereas in developed countries it's almost 100% of GDP. Our uh, number of people who are directly participating in the equity is 3%. And similarly, overall, the number of participants in the mutual fund is also not very significant. Now, technology actually allows us to reach out to people directly by low cost. And can we take advantage of that by reaching out, covering them, bringing them in the ambit of the capital market? and uh, deeper uh, markets going forward. The next point again uh, is, is the point which Rasesh touched upon. Um, is save, how can we channelize the savings into the capital market? We are a saving society, but we save in the non-productive assets. We love gold. We like real estate, 
and rely commodities. Is there anything we can do through the capital market to bring in these uh, now that the commodities are also being related by study, we bring in these savings into the productive channel? And there are products, there is the technologically enabled product which can facilitate this. So I just wanted to leave this thought. And finally, the last thought, and I think this is the most important point I wanted to make, uh, is uh, bringing in innovation. We have done, uh, gone a long way. Uh, like Rasesh, I have also spent 30 years in this market. We have seen from 45 days delivery, as he talked about, uh, Badala getting converted into uh, options and futures, um, a number of changes happened. We still need to do a few more innovation. Innovation can only happen through a better conversation, constructive dialogue, and a faith in both sides. I think we have moved, our regulatory framework has moved more towards rule-based. The pendulum has swung on the other side, uh, tick the box, so long as we comply with the regulation, Yes, it will be that. There was a time when we used to come to SEBI and uh, with a very innovative pro uh, proposal and the request for uh, regulation to be written around that. We have done that in the past. I remember in my career, we worked on book building, we worked on QIP, we worked on many, many new things at that time. Can we go back to that? I totally understand there is a debate around rule-based governance versus uh, uh, principle-based governance, uh, but can we just make a beginning by saying, okay, rather than doing rule-based transaction, can we do transaction-based rules? If there is an innovative transaction, if somebody wants to try out something new, then can we create a regulation around that with the full transparency, with the full disclosure, and we have done that. Uh, it's CV has taken the lead by introducing Sandbox, which is absolutely a phenomenal thing to be done. I, I draw an analogy from the uh, film industry where we have been already the debate whether the index to be written first or the team has to be arranged first. And the film really is strong, the lyricist as well as, well as the music director, they, they need their own space. And that's how the creativity comes. So I think that time has come even to make our market as a global market, we need to really focus on innovation and where the regulator support is very, very important. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got uh, two full days, completely packed, 10 sessions. Something, some, some of the sessions are very, very uh, different this year. Uh, I just want to highlight one particular session, which is on governance, governance through digitization. The government has taken a lot of initiatives in this. Digitization not only improves the governance, but also reduces the cost of the governance. SEBI has taken a lot of steps. I, I know on mutual fund industry, on uh, 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 broking, broking uh, 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 related regulations, a lot has happened uh, on governance through digitization. We have finance secretary talking about that and that's a very different topic we have introduced this year in the conference. Before I close, I want to thank um, the team of uh, uh, SEBI for always helping us, particularly led by Sashi from chairman's office. And I know a number of uh, uh, SEBI participants are there uh, in the call and I want to welcome them and also thank them for their support all through the year. A team at FIKI, Jyoti, Ava, Chiku, uh, Gunjan, uh, they have worked tirelessly to put this conference together. My Capital Markets Committee, uh, Senior Leadership at FIKI, the President FIKI, Rasesh, uh, Secretary General and uh, others, they have been always very supportive. And, uh, a big thank you to all of you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining during the weekday, early in the morning, virtually. As the uh, President said, some of you have joined from uh, area, uh, the, uh, the geography uh, where the time zone may not be comfortable and convenient. So a big thank you to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sumin, for uh, touching a range of issues concerning the markets. Um, I think you've really encapsulated all of that uh, very well. Uh, we now move to Mr. Ashish Chauhan to get the exchange perspective. Mr. Chauhan is very well known. He's the CEO of the uh, Bombay Stock Exchange and a great supporter of Vicky as well. He's also been supporting us quite a lot in the past few years as well. So over to you, Mr. Chauhan. 
You're on mute, sir. You'll have to unmute yourself to speak. Thank you. Uh, respected Chairman Sebi, uh, Mr. Ajay Tyagi, Dr. Sangeeta Reddy, Sir Rashesh Shah, Sir Dilip Chinoy, Sir Sumin Sangai, Sir Himan Shukaji, Ms. Jyoti Vij, Sebi officials, officials from Ministry of Finance and other agencies, other distinguished speakers and friends. I would like to congratulate Hiki team, especially uh, Dr. Sangeeta Reddy, Sir Dilip Chinoy, uh, Mr. Sumin Sangai, Ms. Jyoti Vij, and the entire team for organizing this event uninterrupted for 17 years without a break. Despite difficult COVID situation, 17th annual CAPM conference this year has been organized and has found a large audience is a heartening matter. I'm delighted to see the distinguished list of speakers. I'm sure today and tomorrow we'll have a very good discussion throughout the day, throughout both the days. I will also be there. Over the last few years, SEBI has focused on providing a clean, uninterrupted trading, clearing and settlement framework. In addition, SEBI has also shortened the time taken for the fundraising in IPOs, rights issues and many other things and streamline the entire working of the fundraising activities. Be it privately placed bonds or equity IPOs, SEBI has been able to direct the use of transparent screen-based methods even in privately placed bonds and even commercial papers in this regard, which also expedited the entire process and made it more transparent. During lockdown due to COVID, the first thing SEBI did was to get stockbroking and mutual fund services as essential services across India, even before the lockdown was announced. I think that was a great move because when the lockdown was announced on March 23rd, we are confident that brokers and other employees will be able to reach their offices or move around to complete the settlement process next day and also start allowing to trade uh, their customers. SEBI team coordinated throughout the night of March 23, March 23rd with all market infrastructure institutions to ensure that the markets open normally next day and also fun function normally. It was a tough situation as panic was immense and the police being a state subject, it was not easy to convince all of them across the country to allow stockbrokers employees to continue their work. Since it was the first time stockbroking related services were included in essential service list, many police officers could not even believe that stockbrokers also uh, belong to essential services. It took a few weeks to stabilize. Even now, whenever there is a change in any state's lockdown method, including in Maharashtra, Stockbroking services are often ignored and we have to work behind the scenes to get the necessary inclusion and approvals done for smooth functioning. Nevertheless, on the next working day, market opened normally and have not stopped since then. Similarly, settlements happen in time and without any defaults. There are huge achievements for India. Stock market services are provided across every nook and corner of India. Almost 300,000 terminals and close to 1 million people work in this business. There are almost uh, 51 million unique client codes registered with BSE. They all worked over time and ensured it worked on that day and later on. They also ensured that all the days we have been able to provide trading, clearing, settlement services without any interruption. When we remember Corona warriors or COVID warriors, we remember doctors, police, sanitary workers, etc. We also recognize the contribution of bankers. However, very rarely, in fact, I have not heard anyone saying about brokers and their employees, as well as market infrastructure institutions uh, as corona warriors. We should, in this conference, at least, we should recognize their contributions in providing the market services to this great nation during difficult times. Many officials and employees of SEBI, market infrastructure institutions, exchanges, Depositories, clearing corporations, brokers, bankers have worked in this market area, have been found to be infected with COVID. Some of them have expired too. My heartfelt condol condolences to that to colleagues and families uh, of the people who have deceased. I pay my homage and respect to the Corona warriors from stockbroking community. SEBI has ensured smooth functioning of these markets despite all the problems. I would like to congratulate and thank Chairman SEBI, Sri Ajit Agiji, for his exemplary leadership in this time of crisis and going to office every day during lockdown and leading by example and mot motivating all of us working in these markets. Thank you, sir, for your leadership in these difficult times. Providing liquidity has come as a boon to the market. There were demands initially, even from the community, to close the markets due to deadly disease, which everyone was afraid of. So we insisted on keeping the markets open for normal times 
as there were demands to reduce the time of operations. These decisions have ensured that the confidence of the public in the functioning of Indian markets have been maintained and continuous liquidity has been made available. If we had closed the markets, even for a short period, we could have created a further panic and asset prices might have collapsed. More in private markets. Today, as we talk, we have recovered large portion of the last lost value during the initial panic uh, when the markets fell by close to 40%. It has been possible due to the exemplary leadership shown by SEBI under Chairman Sri Ajit Yagi Ji. Sir, please accept our thank you once again. Despite the panic, Indian markets have traded a lot. More investors have come in to the market. We have also been able to raise a lot of funds. During COVID lockdown period alone, from March 27 to June 7, BSE helped raise more than 3.27 lakh crore rupees in CPs, debentures, private and publicly placed bonds, startup uh, equities, SM equities, and main board equities. The largest right issue ever in Indian markets of Reliance Geo also got completed during this period without any issue. In the current financial year, 2021 itself, which is fully under the COVID period, BSC alone has raised more than rupees 4.05 lakh crore as of yesterday night for Indian corporates by of equities, bonds, CPs, startups and SME funds. It's a testament to the Indian and world investors' confidence in Indian corporate sector and Indian economy as well as SEBI's regulatory prowess. Smooth functioning of Indian markets during this painful period has proved beyond doubt that India is among the highest technology-using nations in the world. Similarly, the ability of Indian IT and BPO sector to run the world's banking system and the market sitting here in India has also proved that India is a reliable country, a responsible country with tremendous skills. India has also behaved extremely responsibly by providing medicines to the world and also providing necessary support to countries in need. I would like to thank our political leadership for these achievements. In this time of rapidly changing geopolitics, all this will augur well for India's future going forward. Overall, last few months have been very difficult for our markets, our country and the world. However, SEBI chairman has showed us that despite a major unthinkable black swan event hitting us, he has led us from the front and I would like all of you to acknowledge his contribution and SEBI's contribution during these difficult times. I would also once again like to thank all our colleagues, Corona warriors of SEBI, exchanges, clearing corporations, depositories, brokers, their employees, bank employees, mutual funds and their employees, independent financial advisors across India, registrars, their employees, bank employees, lawyers, merchant bankers, securities appellate tribunal leadership and their staff, telecom companies, their staff, software vendors and their staff, and everyone else involved in the capital markets. I would also like to thank the rest of the Corona warriors working in the respective fields across the country who created the environment for Indian markets to run smoothly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johan. Great perspective. Of course, I think the markets have really, uh, barring a few days, has come back. So I think that's been a great achievement of SEBI, as was been acknowledged by all the speakers earlier. So as has been the tradition, we will now present a, uh, present a compilation of the articles which have been written on the subject of the conference today by various members of the Tricky Capital Markets Committee. These are so seminal pieces on the role of the capital markets that it can play in the achievement of the PM's vision of Atmanirpal Bharat. We shared a copy of the uh, report with you in advance as well. And also we have done a survey-based study uh, which has been conducted uh, jointly by Fiki and IMM and the Bar on the women, uh, women on board. Uh, so this is a detailed study analysis. Uh, you know, the response of corporate India to the regulatory push towards uh, gender diversity, and uh, not only in terms of the numbers, but also in terms of the extent and nature of involvement of uh, women uh, directors on their board. So we would like to, uh, uh, we will have a detailed presentation on this uh, report later in the day also. So may I request uh, the support team to kindly present the report, please. Can we have the report, please?
these are the two reports, sir. So uh, I hope you get the chance to uh, look at these and also give your feedback. That will be very, very useful for us. Uh, and uh, uh, may I now uh, turn to you, sir, for your welcome address. You obviously having chaired SEBI for so many years, having joined us here every year after year, sir. The audience, we all know you very well and we, we all hold you in high regard and really a heartfelt thank you for joining us every single year of Capital Markets and being very, very appreciative of all our efforts. So may I request, sir, for your keynote address uh, over to you, sir. So you're on mute, I think. Uh, You're a mute, sir. Uh, may I, in the meanwhile, request the members of media that uh, Chairman has kindly agreed to take a few questions. If you can put everything on the chat box, please. Uh, sir, you can unmute yourself and uh, speak, sir. Mr. Tyagi. It's, it's on mute, sir. It's on mute. Rajiv, could you unmute the uh, SEBI boardroom, please? Rajiv Shah. The host, can you, have you? Sir, you're unmuted yeah, now. Can you? Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, can, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Please go ahead, sir. You need this mic or is this no. the one? No. Okay, you can hear me now. Yeah, Dr. Sangeeta Reddy, uh, Mr. Rashesh Shah, Mr. Sneel uh, Sangai, Mr. Ashish Kumar Chauhan, uh, Mr. Dilip uh, Chennai, Mr. Imanshu Kazi, and Ms. Jyoti Vej. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, and, uh, and the uh, media personnel. Uh, very good morning to you all. Uh, this is the first time I am addressing uh, an audience in this COVID era through an online medium like this, I would like to thank Fiki for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts with you at this crucial time. First to uh, coming to the challenges in this era broadly. COVID being the pre uh, predominant issue we all are grappling with, I would like to begin by briefly stating the attendant broad challenges. If there is one word you would find in almost every speech or article in recent times, about the current situation, it would be the word unprecedented. The, this word is exactly apt for the situation we are facing today. At the global level, the lockdowns implemented due to social distancing requirements have brought businesses and economies to almost a standstill. COVID broke the entire global supply chains within just a span of few weeks and crippled the system. With most of the businesses under severe stress and struggling for survival, economies are headed towards recession. With regards to challenges faced as policy makers, we usually tend to have some reference point of a similar challenge faced in the past, either domestic or global. But today, uh, we have no reference point to rely on. Sure, some measures taken in the past, uh, for instance, during the Great Depression of 1930s, or the global financial crisis of 2008-9 can give us some pointers. But definitely we are all treading untested waters today. While there is some amount of discussion and coordination through various international bodies, every country has to swim in these waters in its own way. Uh, only time will tell how and when we reach the show. Now coming to the concept itself of Atam Nirbhar Bharat, that is self-reliant India. In such a situation, the path which India has chosen is that of Atman Nirbhar Bharat. Given the impact that disruptions in the supply chains can have, being self-reliant is very critical in such challenging times, especially in the area of essential goods and services. With this background, uh, with this in background, the Honorable Prime Minister on 12 May 2020 announced Atman Nirbhar Bharat Abhiyan, that is a vision for a self-reliant nation. Subsequently, the Honorable Finance Minister laid out 
various granular details and schemes to operationalize this action. The focus on Atam Nirva Bharat is on increasing investment in sections of strategic importance in India. It gives the overall policy direction to revive the economy. This is where all of you in the forefront of business in different sectors can play a crucial role. Of course, this cannot be done in one day. It may take several months or years to do so. Initially, there would be challenges, of course, but all of us need to work together with resolve to address them and move forward in the direction of becoming an Atum Nirbhar Bharat. Now, coming to capital markets with the subject of the conference, uh, building it, domestic industries at the scale being envisaged under Atam Nirbhar Bharat requires significant investment of capital. Capital markets as an efficient bridge for channelizing savings of millions of people into businesses. The stock markets have since largely recovered from the shocks of March 2020. Nifty is up by around 48% as compared to its lowest value on 24th March. With around 30% return in this financial year till now, Nifty's performance is comparable to performance of stock indices of major economies in the world. The volatility index, which had peaked to 83 uh, 0.63 on 24th March has come down to 24.71 on 28th July. Total fund raised during the first quarter of 2021 were uh, rupees uh, 2.77 trillion as compared to uh, 2.94 trillion during the quarter of the previous year. For equity raising, the, the comparison between the two periods is uh, for this quarter of the, uh, the quarter of this year, 0.67 trillion versus 1.28 trillion in the in the first quarter of the last year, but for debt, the the amount raised, in fact, in the first quarter of this year is more than what it was in the last year's quarter. It is 2.1 trillion uh, rupee as compared to 1.67 trillion rupee as when it was the last quarter, last year's first quarter, Q1. Thus, the overall situation, if I may say, is not all that bad especially considering that fundraising this year started only from May onwards, that also middle May onwards. So uh, virtually in April and up to the middle of May, uh, there was hardly an activity. Uh, there is no cause for despair. Well, capital markets have many facets and uh, I'm sure that the speakers in this conference would be speaking on different issues. In my address, I would like to broadly focus on two areas of topical importance. A development of corporate bond market and fundraising by the corporates, including stressed companies in these times. First, coming to the corporate bond market. Uh, development and deepening of corporate bond market ought to be one of the top post agenda of the policy makers today, more so considering the problems with the banking sector. The amount of outstanding corporate bonds in India has grown from 15 trillion rupee in 2013-14 to 33 trillion rupee in 2019-20, reflecting a CAGR of about 14%. Correspondingly, outstanding bank credit has grown at a CAGR of about 9%, with figures rising from INR 61 trillion to INR 104 trillion during the same period. Although corporate uh, bond market has seen growth, higher growth rate over the last five, six years as compared to outstanding bank credit, in absolute terms, it is still around one-third of the bank credit. If we consider the secondary corporate bond market, we saw an increasing an increase in trading volumes from rupee 10 trillion in 2013-14 to rupee 20 trillion in 2019-20, amounting to roughly 10% of GDP. What the aforesaid data, however, doesn't uh, show the data on issuance and trading. It doesn't tell us is the problem of corporate bond market getting restricted to only top-rated bonds in India. Today, around 97% of the issuance and trading in corporate bond market is in just top three categories, that is AAA, AA plus, and AA. As compared to this, uh, in USA, for example, only 5% of the corporate bond market trading happens in the top three rating buckets. Uh, no, in fact, rating buckets of AAA and AA and 75% of the trading happens in the next three trading markets, that is A, triple B, and double B. 
in view of the market getting restricted to top rated bonds there is only a limited number of issuers who are able to raise debt through this market in india there is a dire need to move down the rating curve and there are issues on both the demand and supply sides of the equation in the secondary bond market mutual funds are the only major active players about 40% of the trading volumes that is a average of buy and sell is by the mutual funds they constantly churn their portfolio on account of operational requirements mark to market their holdings and declare nav on daily basis naturally the illiquidity in the bond market hits them the most uh, we clearly saw this unfolding in the recent times the need for having more players including institutional investors in the market is apparent there is an interlinkage between the corporate bond market and government security market Typically, the pricing of corporate bond is benchmarked to that of GSEC of corresponding maturity. However, in India, trading in GSEC is concentrated only in the seven to ten years maturity bucket. There is a long way to go to have a continuous yield curve for GSEC. This affects pricing of corporate bonds. Unification of financial markets is an idea whose time has come. the market infrastructure for corporate bond and gsec markets should be integrated having two separate ecosystems results in artificial segmentation of investors and divergent governance and regulatory norms for institutions in the two markets performing similar functions the market infrastructure institutions dealing with these two type of securities should follow the same rules and regulations the economies of scope and scale also dictate such unification we have seen a huge surge in participation of retail investors in the equity market in the last few months the fact that there is also a surge in opening of of demand accounts suggests that many of these retail investors are perhaps first time investors in the stock market many analysts have quoted the lack of their investment opportunities of other investment opportunities as one of the reasons for this phenomena with a view to facilitating a smooth and welcome entry of these newcomers to the capital markets it would be ideal that they begin their journey by first investing in risk free g6 i would suggest that to achieve this the g6 may be issued in demat form these new demat account holders after gaining experience of investing in g6 could then gradually add other securities to their demat accounts sebi recognized depositories have a wide spatial spread covering almost 97% of the pin codes of the country in all they already have nearly 4 crore demat accounts the government has announced an additional borrowing of uh, rupees 4 trillion this year on account of covid over and above the budgeted amount of rupees 8 trillion the issuance of gsex in demat form apart from using the process of making investments by non institutional participants in these securities may also facilitate easier raising of uh, these borrowings national infrastructure pipeline envisages an investment of uh, 111 trillion rupee in infrastructure projects in the country in the next 5 years that is roughly rupees 22 trillion a year this is a huge per annum funding requirement a big jump from the current level of annual investment in infrastructure sector in the country due to inherent alm issues bank lending to infrastructure projects is a challenge and such projects need to be funded by the bond market to the extent possible however the issuance by infrastructure projects do not typically form fall sorry do not typically fall in the category of top rated corporate bonds it would be virtually uh, impossible for these projects to access the bond market unless a credible credit enhancement mechanism is set up and operationalized at the earliest trading in corporate uh, trading in corporate bonds is, is largely otc which is then reported to the exchanges to replicate this otc nature but with better price discovery and transparency through electronic mode sebi has recently introduced rfq platforms we have decided to mandate mutual funds to use this platform in a phased manner use of this platform by other institutional investors as well will result in better transparency and price discovery in the bond market
repo transactions in corporate bonds are vital for liquidity in secondary market they also facilitate market making operations unfortunately the corporate bond repo market has not taken off as expected we are examining the policy options to make it work including having a central clearing facility for tri party repo trades in corporate bonds now uh, coming to the fund raising uh, aspects as i said that uh, apart from corporate bond i like to uh, speak something on fund raising especially in these times sebi has come out with a number of relaxations to facilitate fund raising by corporates during these covid times these relaxations relate to rights issue follow on offer qips creeping acquisition and preferential issues we have virtually covered almost all possible methods of fund raising many corporates have already used or are in the process of using these relaxations to raise funds to meet their requirements the covid situation has pushed many companies into stress and worsen it for already stressed companies these companies are finding it difficult to raise funds from the market further due to the suspension of ibc provisions for 6 months both the companies and the lenders are unable to utilize the ibc framework for resolution in this backdrop sebi has come out with relaxed norms for preferential issue pricing and exemption from open offer for eligible stressed companies these relaxed norms finalized after wide public consultation can be used for restructuring of stressed companies without going through the ibc process of course the guidelines have due safeguards built in to prevent misuse the pricing of preferential allotments by eligible stressed companies as per this new norms will be at not less than average of the weekly high and low of all weighted average prices of the related equity shares during the last two weeks Uh, which would very much reflect the latest valuations at the same time the investor will have exemption from open offer obligation these relaxed norms provide great opportunity i would like, once again like to emphasize for both lenders and corporates to restructure the stress assets outside the ibc mechanism yet another important source funding source for stress company is aifs We had initiated a proposal for allowing AIFs to directly purchase the stress loans from the lenders. Recently, RBI has issued a consultation paper on the subject of permitting purchasing of stress loans by a wider set of entities. If allowed, the AIFs would be able to buy out stress loans of banks and NBFCs, thereby releasing their locked capital. I would like to briefly touch upon REITs and NBFCs, which have proved to be quite successful especially in the last 3 years 2017 onwards infrastructure and real estate are two sectors that have tremendous spillover effects on the rest of the economy reits and invests are vehicles which enable monetization of existing assets and have shown significantly growth over the last 3 years the total unit capital of all reits and invests put together today stands at more than rupees 58000 crore a series of policy policy measures such as reducing the trading lot facilitating further uh, fund raising through preferential issue including easier placement to institutional investors rights issue including fast track rights issue enabling monetization through pledging of units etc have been taken by sebi there is a clear visibility of a strong pipeline of infrastructure and real estate assets to be monetized through invites and reits in near future now as i said that i will touch upon only these two broad aspects and there are many other subjects which i'm sure that there's a list of speakers and i've seen the agenda and i don't want to duplicate and i'm sure other speakers will uh, cover those points so i'd like to uh, just uh, end my thing by saying the way forward and conclusion we are passing through a difficult stressful and uncertain time however the challenges also bring along with them several opportunities the revival of the stock market and an uptick in fund raising by corporates is encouraging the required reforms in the corporate bond market should be brought out should be brought in without any further loss of time unification of financial markets is an idea whose time has come as clearly demonstrated by its actions during the last 4 5 months 
SEBI is fully geared to meet the challenges of the COVID era. We ensured the normal working of capital markets during the entire lockdown period, ensuring continuity of operations. Credit is due to not only SEBI employees, but also uh, to employees of different market infrastructure institutions and various market participants. SEBI has shown flexibility and pragmatism while bringing in a slew of changes in the policies and regulations to help corporates and market participants tide over the problems. We are open to any further suggestions in this regard. In fact, I have myself noted down the suggestions by the previous speakers and uh, will respond back to uh, Fiki uh, definitely. Uh, I exhort the captains of industry present here to come forward and make bold investment decisions and contribute towards building an Atam Nirbhar Bharat. Thank you and wishing you a good day ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. In indeed a very insightful address at this uh, juncture. Uh, the industry does require uh, a future roadmap. Uh, so which you have uh, very nicely provided on uh, some of the important areas, sir. Um, there are a few questions from the media. Uh, so uh, should I just read out uh, uh, one by one or should I just put a couple of them and then you would want to respond to all together? I think uh, you can, uh, uh, you can uh, speak, uh, say, you can combine two or three, three two questions okay, at a time or something. Okay, sir. So I think one question is that uh, uh, how is, is the capital markets uh, prepared for, you know, achieving the $5 trillion economy? Many of the, uh, I think, th points that you've already addressed, but if there are issues that you would like to highlight, sir. Uh, another question is the usage of blockchain uh, to have the real-time uh, settlement rather than uh, 2P plus 2, so moving forward uh, using the blockchain. Uh, there's one more question on, you know, stock brokers allowed to work from home. So can uh, the technologies of geotagging, etc., could that be used uh, to, you know, permanently move to this kind of an arrangement so that the fixed costs uh, come down and the compliance levels are uh, still maintained? Uh, there's one more question on the retail participation, which has gone very high in the equity markets in the recent months. So is that an issue of concern uh, with SEBI? Uh, so I think I, I can read out uh, a few later. So if you could want to respond to these. Uh, coming to the first uh, question of uh, how capital market uh, infrastructure is geared up to, uh, to uh, help achieving $5 trillion economy, uh, we, as uh, as I said, that uh, on the equity side, we are very well geared. Our systems are one of the best in the world. And as this uh, COVID period has shown that there have been no defaults in uh, clearing and settlement, uh, despite uh, markets moving by, Sensex moving by more than 3,000 points in a single day. So we have no issues and we are very confident that whatever is the, whatever are the requirements, and uh, challenges on the equity side, we have no issues. But on the bond uh, market side, uh, as other speakers also said, Mr. Roshesha said, and also uh, Mr. Sangai also said, and all, many of the things are well aware. So on that, we have actually moved ahead. Uh, in these times, uh, we have learned uh, it uh, uh, much more than, than earlier that uh, bond market is very critical. And on that, we have taken some initiatives. We also, in fact, uh, uh, taken up uh, some uh, points we have taken up with the government too. And uh, it is the bond market which actually is something which that's why I uh, tried to highlight only on that aspect to if you want to achieve five trillion, trillion economy going forward by 2024-25. Now, blockchain uh, real-time settlement, we fully appreciate. As said, settlement has come down from T plus 45 and maybe two decades back to T plus two, to have a real-time settlement, uh, we have actually requested uh, exchanges and uh, Mr. Ashish Chauhan is also here to go for uh, 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 trial basis and uh, it has a lot of opportunity and I I think uh, it, it, it is something which uh, should be uh, tried more seriously by the exchanges to have a real-time settlement through the blockchain and at least the trial basis they should put with definitive, definitive uh, uh, 
pilot uh, project. Stock brokers permanently uh, working from home. This is, uh, uh, I think, this is worth considering seeing the success of uh, uh, markets, the increase in uh, uh, trading, uh, and uh, as I said, that with uh, hardly any defaults. So it is worth considering. We will see it more carefully. Uh, right now, we allowed as a temporary measure, but uh, what what could be the downside? We'll we'll see that. Retail participation is uh, is not a cause of concern, although the way it is increased. As I said in the month of June, there were more than uh, uh, 10 lakh uh, new DMAT accounts, as compared to average of 5 lakh per month DMAT account in the pre-COVID uh, times. So it's a huge jump in terms of the trading also and the DMAT accounts. So uh, they need to uh, it, uh, they need to be well informed to invest, and that's how I'm suggesting that uh, if they can start with the GSEC, which is a risk-free security, and in the same DMAT account, they slowly build the other securities also, and uh, so that will be uh, a more gradual uh, entry. But uh, I'm not doubting the wisdom of individuals who are participating, and uh, we actually. Uh, for that, I would just request corporate to be very upfront in sharing information, whichever they have, in public domain, because it's a question of trust. And uh, if uh, trust is broken, then there will be a backlash and problems. So my request to the corporates would be to be upfront in telling uh, whatever is the position, the truth. And uh, it's a great opportunity, the way retail investors are showing faith, that faith should not be broken. Thank you, sir. Um, the, there are a few more questions. So one is that uh, you the uh, regulatory environment which is developed in the post-COVID world. Uh, so how do you see that? And also, uh, when would SEBI be comfortable in rolling back in some of the relaxations of the company during this crisis? Of course, we as Fiki have been saying that it is an evolving situation, so one has to wait and watch. Um, so your view, sir, and uh, then uh, uh, ha have any of the companies sought uh, SEBI approval as yet on the direct listing abroad? And I think the guidelines are still awaited. Uh, nevertheless, uh, what's your view also on um, any update that is there on the listing of dual class shares? Uh, one more question is on when do you expect DMAT of GSEC and is there a timeline there? Another question, sir, is on the uh, SAB planning to ease uh, the pricing rules for QIPs. It's currently, there's a discount of only 5% which can be given uh, over the uh, flow price. So will this be increased? There are three, four more questions, but maybe you can answer these and I can take it in the next slot, sir, if you have time. So, uh, Jyoti, on the first on the regulatory experience during the COVID times, I must personally admit that uh, uh, what have been the learnings in the last, uh, say, four or five months, they perhaps have been more than the, my previous three years I spent here. So it, it has been, you know, trial by uh, fire, if I may say. But uh, we have learned a lot and uh, we have uh, done consultations and whatever uh, we have decided is uh, in transparent and open manner. And uh, I think it will uh, uh, it will uh, help uh, keep uh, all SEBI employees in good stead to going forward as to how to deal with crisis. And uh, we, I myself, feel that SEBI has been reasonably successful in dealing with it. Uh, SEBI rolling back the relaxations. Uh, this uh, couldn't have come from the corporates. I'm really surprised that they are saying that when I relax, when I rolling back. The uh, so I like said so that, you know, Piki has said that, you know, this is an evolutionary situation, so obviously the relaxation will have to be seen. I just added my bit. This is a question from the media. Yeah, so you I, know, that's right. So we actually have uh, put some uh, timelines for various relaxations. We have sunset clauses, and as and when we near them, we'll take a call as to, uh, you're absolutely right, as to uh, what happens to this pandemic and where will it end and where it will go, as I said, that is not really uh, not known. But we'll take a call as in when we uh, reach the deadlines. 
direct listing uh, uh, abroad. Dr. Reddy also raised this. You see, we came out with this in our, we set up a committee way back in, in December 2018, they gave a report. And since we deal with listed companies, we actually, and we felt that right now Indian companies can only go abroad and raise DR, depository receipts. And that also has not worked well. In fact, there have been hardly any DRs in the last uh, five, six years. So first we revamped the DR scheme also to make it more realistic. And the basic point which we tackled was that any DR listing or any listing abroad, so the uh, um, money laundering laws of those countries in terms of the KYC and beneficial ownership, because the investors are of those countries. So that was the biggest challenge which we had. But ultimately, we convinced Department of Revenue Government of India that you allow some jurisdictions where you have the comfort Ultimately, other countries also are responsible countries, part of FATF and ISCO. So that was big achievement, which eight jurisdictions, including GIFT IFSC, was notified uh, for DR scheme. Now, the same thing will apply for the listed companies or the companies to be listed. We deal with listed companies. So our idea was that these companies can also, instead of going for DR, go there and get listed and raise foreign capital. And the same thing, it was much before COVID times, but uh, if they can raise capital uh, abroad, there will be additional resources, capital raising, this was the idea. Now later that required, uh, required PMLA, FEMA, uh, Companies Act, and uh, I think in one income tax uh, also clarification, which we raised with the government. Uh, PMLA think this eight uh, jurisdictions has come but uh, FEMA and Companies Act and income tax didn't, hasn't come. We, in fact, have also suggested a framework uh, draft which government could issue. But uh, Ministry of Corporate Affairs, uh, as rightly uh, 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 put by uh, Dr. Reddy, is saying that uh, they also want to look at the companies which are unlisted and which want to get listed there only. So that certainly is not in SEBI's jurisdiction. And if any framework is to be worked out for that, uh, that is for government, especially Ministry of Corporate Affairs to suggest. They also moved an amendment in the Companies Act in the month of March in Parliament. Uh, we have been under discussions and wherever we have been called to contribute, we are open. In fact, the idea started from SEVI, so we actually want that uh, it should be, uh, it should be uh, implemented. On dual listing, uh, we came out with a framework again uh, for uh, differential, uh, by that differential voting rights only. Yeah. yeah. So we came out with that framework and that also was in consultation with the market, but uh, right till now no one has actually applied for dual listing. DMAT or GSEC is something which government has to decide. This is an idea which we are saying that we should help having retail participation uh, come into stock markets in a smoother way, but it's for the government to take a call as to by when they would uh, like to do it. Pricing discount of QIPs uh, uh, right now, I'm sorry, is not in our radar. They already have 5% discount, and uh, definitely when the prices were already low, there was no case, but now prices have come back, but still I think uh, it is really not our uh, priority as of now. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. I think Sunil has a question or two. So before I invite him on to for his vote of thanks. Uh, thank you, Jyoti. So just to clarify, these are not my questions. I'm also getting some uh, inputs from uh, corporates. This is not uh, a question from uh, media. Uh, one question is about the first quarter results. Um, you did some relaxation for uh, last year, uh, 31st March results, but for the first quarter results, something has happened. I think the expectation is to do more. The postponement, I think the suggestion was to club it with September. I believe that's not happening, but uh, any thoughts around the first quarter results? Uh, so that's coming from the corporate. The rest, I think I, we can avoid in positive of time. Uh, Mr. Sangai, on the first quarter, naturally that combination you will you will agree that with the retail participation, increase in trading and all, it should be, you know, whatever is uh, 
the information uh, should be in public domain. In terms of the relaxation for submitting the quarter results, that we'll see. In fact, uh, we already relaxed for the last quarter of previous year till end of this month, uh, which uh, which I think uh, people must adhere to. Now it is uh, it's high time. Uh, we did it. Uh, I, I don't remember the number of companies. It was. Uh, uh, last month, in the last week of June, we uh, we took a review and then we extended. So, if it requires extending uh, by some time, we will take a view. Uh, maybe we will take a view uh, in the first week of uh, next month. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, uh, before I hand over to Himanshu, I'll also like to acknowledge presence of our Secretary General, uh, Mr. Dilip Chinoy who silently supports us all the time. He's always present also. So thank you, um, ST, for uh, being with us this morning as well. Uh, so Himanshu, uh, he's the co-chair of the Fiki Capital Market, of course, the CEO of Edelweiss. A lot of support from him as well. So over to Himanshu for the vote of thanks before we move to the next session. Thank you very much, Jyoti. Uh, respected Shri Tyagi Ji, Sangeeta Ji, Ashish, Rashesh, Sunil, Dilip, Jyoti, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I wish that all of you are safe and keeping healthy in these tough times. It is challenging time for everybody, but I'm sure that we are making progress every day towards making the world a safer place. One silver lining in the cloud for what has been a challenging time has been the increasing use of technology, seeing as we are doing this conference in a completely digital mode. Technology is one of the foundations of a robust capital market and always has and will continue to play a key role in the growth of capital markets in future also. Secondly, I would like to convey my sincere gratitude to Sri Ashay Chagiji for his encouraging words. SEBI has always proactively taken steps to promote growth in capital markets and a lot of it is owed to the visionary leadership of Sri Chagiji. It is heartening to note that, sir, you have set two key agendas with further development of corporate bond markets and ease of capital raise, especially for stress corporates, as priorities for SEBI, as these are need of the hour. Also, special thanks to SEBI officials for being receptive to all the suggestions that we at Capital Market Committee have been making to them right through these trying times. Your words today, sir, as ever, were highly enlightening and have set a great context for what we hope to achieve over the next two years of this conference. Theme for conference this time is Atmanirbhar Bharat, role of capital market. As mentioned by the Honorable Prime Minister, it is time that our country starts rapidly traversing the journey towards becoming Atmanirbhar. Capital markets has an important role to play in this journey, as articulated by all of you. To this effect, we hope that these two days are filled with many ideas, thoughts and possible experiments which can help us achieve the Atmanirbharata. We have an immediate session by Honorable Chief Economic Advisor right after this session, which I am sure will be as fruitful as one of that Mr. Tyagiji. Another important aspect being covered in the potential options around infrastructure financing, which is a key aspect to any country's nation building. The focus will be on REITs and INVITs, which have been a good start, but there are definitely ways that can be made, they can be made more successful. Bond markets, like Rashish mentioned, will be a key aspect of the future growth trajectory and we have a session around that as well. We also have a session scheduled with Honorable Secretary Deepam. With the COVID impact, we should actively be looking at disinvestment opportunities to help the strong relief package announced by the government and I am sure the Honorable Secretary will have some important ideas to share. There are other key sessions as well, including the one on digitization in governance. Like I mentioned before, Technology will be the key dimension to the future, and I'm sure this session will provide some insights into that. All in all, I'm sure we are in for two enriching and fulfilling days of knowledge, ideas, and innovation. India is at the brink of inflection point, and we have an opportunity for capital markets to play a leading role in the same. The next two days will be a preview into what the future holds and how we can together shape it in a, for creating Atmanirbhar Bharat. Again, I would like to thank all of you for joining us today and hope we have a great and insightful conference ahead. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we come to the end of the inaugural session. I would just like to add 
another word of thanks for uh, Mr. Tyagi in particular for the unstinted support that we've gone through, got from you all the time and to all the other panelists uh, in the inaugural session for joining us this morning. Uh, we will shortly be moving to the next session. Uh, so just give us a few minutes, uh, audience, and uh, we will be with you uh, with the next session. Mr. Ramarjit Singh, uh, the SEBI uh, Executive Director, will be joining you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jyoti. Thank you, uh, DC. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Session. All the best. Thank you, ma'am.